A reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has pitilessly destroyed all the homes of Jacob. In his displeasure, he has shattered the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has thrown to the ground. He has left accursed the kingdom and its rulers. Mutely, they sit on the ground, the elders of the daughter of Zion. They have put dust on their heads and wrapped themselves in sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang their heads down to the ground. My eyes wasted away with weeping. My entrails shuddered. My liver spilled on the ground at the ruin of the daughters of my people, as children, mere infants, fainted in the squares of the citadel. They kept saying to their mothers, where is the bread? As they fainted like wounded men in the squares of the city, as they poured out their souls on their mother's breasts. How can I describe you? To what compare you, daughter of Jerusalem? Who can rescue and comfort you, virgin daughter of Zion? For huge as the sea is your affliction, who can possibly cure you? The visions your prophets had on your behalf were delusive tinsel things. They never pointed out your sin to ward off your exile. The visions they proffered you were false, fallacious, misleading. Cry aloud then to the Lord, groan, daughter of Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no relief. Grant your eyes no rest. Up, cry out in the night time, in the early hours of darkness. Pour your heart out like water before the Lord. Stretch out your hands to him for the lives of your children, who faint with hunger at the entrance to every street. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Why, O oh God, have you cast us off forever? Why blaze with anger against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your people whom you chose long ago, the tribe you redeemed to be your own possession, the mountain of Zion where you made your dwelling. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Turn your steps to these places that are utterly ruined. The enemy has laid waste the whole of the sanctuary. Your foes have made uproar in your house of prayer. They have set up their emblems, their foreign emblems, high above the entrance to the sanctuary. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Their axes have battered the wood of its doors. They have struck together with hatchet and pickaxe. O oh God, they have set your sanctuary on fire. They have raised and profaned the place where you dwell. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Remember your covenant. Every cave in the land is a place where violence makes its home. Do not let the oppressed return disappointed. Let the poor and the needy bless your name. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He took our sicknesses away and carried our diseases for us. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion came up and pleaded with him. Sir, he said, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and in great pain. I will come myself and cure him, said Jesus. The centurion replied, sir, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word and my servant will be cured. For I am under authority myself and have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he goes, to another, come here, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you solemnly, nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. And I tell you that many will come from east and west to take their places with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. 
but the subjects of the kingdom will be turned out into the dark, where there will be, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go back then, you have believed, so let this be done for you. And the servant was cured at that moment. And going into Peter's house, Jesus found Peter's mother-in-law in bed with fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to wait on him. That evening, they brought him many who were possessed by devils. He cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. He took our sicknesses away and carried, it, carried our diseases for us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love how in the scriptures, the deepest emotions of human beings are not uh, tucked away somewhere. In the Bible, we experience the whole um, panoply of human emotion. And in that first reading, that first reading from the book of Lamentations is aptly called, it's pure lamenting, lamenting the situation they found themselves in. We heard a couple of days ago the, the exile of the Jews um, and the desecration of the temple. And this is, the, this is the reaction. And we hear the same in the psalm. The reaction of the Jews to the, to the place where God dwells is being desecrated. Do we hear that? O oh God, they have set your sanctuary on fire. They have raised and profaned the place where you dwell. And it's just crying out to God. Crying out to God, not in words that we think we should speak to God in, but in the words of our heart, in the pain that they're experiencing, and the abandonment they experience. They feel abandoned. Wherever we're at, the scripture tells us, give that to the Lord, tell that to the Lord. Maybe you need to hear that today, that it's in the emotion you're experiencing right now that the Lord wants to meet you. Not wait till that's gone, you know, wait till you're in a better mood, wait till you're more joyful, and then begin praying again. That's not what the scriptures tell us, but that we lament to God, and it's a very appropriate prayer sometimes. What's God's answer to that? Jesus Christ, in the gospel, he says, I will come myself and cure him, said Jesus. I will come myself into that pain, into that lamenting, into your sinfulness, into your brokenness, says Jesus to humanity. That's where, that's how the Lord wants to respond to our questions. Not with a solution or with a, a, an equation that fits or a one-liner, but with his only son. I will come myself and cure him. So we open our hearts to the healing the Lord wants to bring into our lives personally and to the world that we're in at the moment, so in need of the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ.